study. I do want to uh, begin by thinking of, of, about those that uh, we want to lift up in prayer today. So uh, be in prayer, especially for Jackson Igo. Jackson is uh, still in the hospital. He's in a lot of pain. So as a church family, let's be lifting up not just Jackson, but also his mom and dad. This is a difficult time for them as well. And uh, he's got a, a high fever and uh, he's in just a terrible amount of pain. Uh, he has been diagnosed with pneumonia. I read that today. So uh, be in prayer for them, lifting them up in prayer. Uh, also, I've continued uh, prayers for the Myrna McElfresh family. Uh, Myrna is still in the hospital. Uh, she is improving, and we praise God for that. So continue to pray for her. Uh, she's got a long uh, road ahead, so be in prayer for her. Also, for Kay Patterson, be lifting up Miss Kay in prayer, uh, asking the Lord to be with her and continue to give her healing and strength. She's doing very well. And just continue to remember Miss Kay. Uh, we also want to lift up Jacob Jelani and Baby Carolyn Hester. Uh, they're still in Hawaii, and so keep praying for them and lifting them up. Also, uh, be lifting up Miss Lisa. She's there to help them, and that the Lord just be with them during this time as well. I'd also appreciate if you remember a friend of mine and her husband. I mentioned them a, a, a week or so ago. Um, Sherry, Maxie, and her husband Mike. Mike had a stroke and uh, a debilitating stroke. So as a church family, let's be lifting them up in prayer as uh, Mike will begin uh, doing some occupational therapy and some physical therapy from home. And uh, this is a, a new chapter for them. So be in prayer for them. This is a, a, a difficult time on them as well. So uh, Sherry Maxey and Mike Maxey. Uh, others that I know that we have in, in our hearts and uh, just continue to be lifting each other up in prayer uh, during this time. There's a lot of unknowns. Be in prayer for our first responders. Be in prayer for those that, uh, that are our teachers. This is a difficult time on our teachers and our students. So uh, be lifting them up in prayer as well. So I ask that you join me in a word of prayer today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for your love and thank you for your mercy and grace. And Lord, I pray that you continue to be with us. Father, we've mentioned a lot of names today, but God, we know that you know every need. And Father, we just lift them up to you. And I pray that you just may move in every circumstance and in every situation, that you may bring healing, that you may bring peace, that you may bring comfort that only you can do. And Lord, I ask for your blessings upon us. Help us as we study your word, Lord, to be able to encourage our hearts and lives through it. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do for us, the protection you give us, the way that you continue to look after us in every single day. We ask, Lord, for your blessings upon us. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> so today we're continuing on with the prodigal son. We're still looking at, uh, at the progressions that have happened in his life. And now we've got to the point where at the prodigal son, he's to a point of a resolution in his life. Uh, we, we talked about how things have been uh, difficult for him to that point where uh, after he left his dad, uh, he came to finally a realization in his life that um, where he would need to go back to his father. And so this is the resolution of that uh, re uh, realization. So now he's, he's to the point where he is, there's action behind. Sometimes we come to, uh, we know what we have to do, but then there's times that we don't ever get it done. Um, I, I know that Crystal's got a, a list of things that she wants me to do. And, uh, Sometimes I know what that list is, but sometimes I, I'm just not in the mood to do some of those things. So uh, as 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 individuals and as as people, those those are some of the places that we get in life. This is where this young man is. The Bible doesn't tell us how long it has been since the beginning of this, where he asked his father to give him everything that that was due to him. And he left to this point in his life. So uh, I'm going to be reading out of Luke chapter 15. And I'm going to be reading from uh, verse 11 down through verse 18 today. And so the Bible says, uh, and he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with righteous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land. And he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him to his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly from the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave him to him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. Here's verse 18. I will arise and go to my father, and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Now, this man comes to this point in his life, this young man, 
the youngest of the sons, to the point of realization that there is uh, some things that he needs to correct. And so, again, Scripture doesn't tell us how long, as far as a time elapse, has happened here. But we find that the resolution happens. And whenever there's a resolution, not just the realization, um, not just the to-do list, so to speak, but there has to be an action to follow it. And so with with Crystal especially, um, I can say, okay, honey, I know I need to take care of that. But until I, I actually go and take care of that, I, I've not brought a resolution for her. And so this man in his life is, is actually coming to a point where there's an action. This part of resolution requires an action. And I want you to see how it says here in the scripture in verse 18, he says, I will arise. Now, this is the first part that we find here. This is the first part of action that he has to take. He realizes first, I believe, for the very first time that the dangers that he's in, uh, the danger of the country that he's in. The scripture says it's a far country. It, he took his his everything that he had and he went to a far country. He wanted to be away from his father. He wanted to be out from under uh, anything of his father's thumb. He didn't want his father knowing anything about his life. And so this first realization that requires action he has to arise. He has sunk down to a level in, in his life that he thought he probably would never have gone to. Uh, as a matter of fact, when he left his father, he was probably pretty wealthy. And now he gets to the point where he has nothing. And so he is, he's gone down, down, down in his life to the point where he's, he's feeding the swine and he's wanting to eat with them. And that's how bad it is. And so this man, he realizes the danger of the far country that he's in. Now, um, the scripture tells us here that, that there's a famine in the land and the place where he's at in life, it does not supply the necessities that he needs. It doesn't supply the things that he needs in his life to, to live on. Now, there, there's a place that's wanting in him. Now, there's a lot of folks that, that spiritually are in this spot. They, they're left wanting spiritually. There's a lot of things in their, in their life that, um, that are not pleasing to God. And so they, they're left with a place that's wanting spiritually. They realize that they've, they've not had that relationship, a growing relationship with the Lord. Some folks have never come to a saving knowledge of Christ. And, and there's, there's a, a desire to worship, but they don't understand how to worship or who to worship until they're introduced to a holy God through Jesus Christ, his son. For those of us that are Christians, maybe that we have backslidden in our faith and maybe haven't served the Lord the way we ought to, there is that pull that's in our life that we'll get to here in just a few moments. So he knows that there's something missing, that there's uh, the necessities of his life uh, are not there. He's left wanting. And I think it's it's something to, for us to see today. Uh, first of all, about uh, there's, there's three different Ds that I have come up with here. The depravity that his life has gotten into. Uh, he has exchanged everything that was ever valuable to him to live in, in, in a pigsty is what's happened. So his whole life has just continued to degrade uh, point by point by point. He's lost his money. He's lost his friends. He's lost everything that he had. He's hungry. Uh, no one's giving anything to him. He continues to slide down further and further and further into that depravity. And until he decides, I will arise to come up out of that, he continues to fall down. And that's the same way that happens in our life. And it's the same way that happens in our society. He says, I will arise. And so there's a depravity that, that he's gotten into. And then the second part of that is a distance that he, he knows is in his life. There's a distance that's going on. It's a spiritual distance. One, uh, he, he knows he's not right with God because as he says here, I will arise and go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against and before thee. And so he realizes there's a spiritual distance that has happened because he knows that he's not right. He's doing things that God told him not to do. And when that happens in our life, when the Lord gives us that realization, then we are to arise just like this man that I will arise. Uh, there's not only a spiritual distance, but there's also a physical distance. He has gone to a far country and I'm sure he went with, uh, he went in first class. Uh, he didn't want to, he had all of the money that he had and, and all of the possessions. And so he left first class and now he's coming back 
less than coach. So he comes, I will arise. There is a physical distance between him and his father. He's going to have to go back and he's going to have to walk it. He's not going to be able to ride. He may have to hitchhike his way back. I remember as a kid growing up, uh, we would always, our, our neighborhood kids, would. Uh, we knew everybody that lived around. And so uh, it wasn't anything for us to be driving down the road and see somebody hitchhiking. And so dad would always stop, pick one up. Hey, where are you going, son? And they'd tell us, oh, we're going down to the store. Dad would drop them at the store. I, I remember those days very vividly. You know, in, in our day and time, there's not a whole lot of folks I would want to pick up on the side of the road. And this guy, he knows that he's in a far country. Nobody knows him and no one's going to to uh, go out of their way to help him here. So there's a physical distance. And not only is there a physical distance, there's a relational di distance as well. He's lost all of his friends. The only friends that he had when he got to this far country was the good time crowd. And when the good time came to an end, his friends left as well. And so he didn't know anyone. He's joined himself to a citizen of the country just to feed the swine. So he has nobody that has has checked on him and no one that has encouraged him in his life. So this depravity has led to the distance and that will ultimately lead to destruction. If he doesn't arise and if he doesn't go back and know that he has to return to the father there's a destruction that that awaits him and so it's it's so imperative that you and i would see this that that when we come to this point in our life where we realize that we're not right with god that we will will follow him and that we would say lord uh, i repent of my sin god i pray that you would would help me lord help me out of the the situation i'm in god help me to be pleasing to you lord restore me to the point where I'm a, a servant that is someone that, that you're pleased with. And so uh, the first part of this is he says, I will arise. The second part is a, a great look at, at where his heart is at this point. He says, I will go to my father. So not only will I will arise, but the second part is I will go. He realizes that to rise up, he must get out of where he's at. And so the situation of following God is a pull to come back to the father. And he says, I will go. And then he follows that up with to my father. Uh, all things naturally will draw us to home. Uh, the things in our life, we those those celebrations that we have, those great things, those bad times, we have those points that, that draw us to a point of home. Uh, when things go on, um, it's I, I want my kids to always know that there's a home that they have. Um, no matter where they go in life, no matter what happens in their life, I want them to be able to know that there's always a home for them. And so that God does the same with us. And it doesn't matter how far that we have fallen. God welcomes us home. He calls us home. And so if you're watching today and you've never invited Jesus into your heart to be your Savior, then you can know this. You are not so far away from God that he doesn't call out to you and reach out to you where you are. And the same for those that is a Christian. Uh, the, the home that the Father gives us spiritually, that, that spiritual home, he continues to move in us and draw us to him. And so let me encourage you, as the Lord speaks to your heart, always return. Uh, sometimes the Lord uh, gives us encouragement in areas of our life that we can do better in. And so that we always submit and surrender to him. The second part of this is I will go to my father. It's a, a drawing of the Holy Spirit. Um, I, be I believe that the Holy Spirit puts in us that desire to return home, especially if we've come to know Jesus Christ as a Savior and Lord, we will not be satisfied in a world that where our relationship to the Father is broken. Uh, and a, a damaged relationship with the Father, the Holy Spirit, won't allow us to enjoy those times. I, I've got a good friend of mine that told me that, that um, there was a point in his life that he was living away from the Lord. And during that time, he said, you know, even though that Everybody that I was around was having a great time. He said, I was miserable in my life because I realized that, that I wasn't supposed to be doing this. And so God speaks to our heart through the Holy Spirit to always draw us to righteousness, to always draw us to a return to the Lord where this man says, I will return to my father. And that's the same for anyone who comes to know Christ as a savior and Lord, that we can return to our father, my father in heaven. You see, there's no place that we can receive comfort outside 
of that relationship with God spiritually. That's the only place that we can have that comfort. Uh, I'll never forget when my kids are growing up, uh, one of them will hurt themselves and they'll be crying. And sometimes they come and just sit in my lap because they hurt. Uh, they stub a toe or something like that. And um, Emily came running through the house one day and hit her toe uh, on one of the tables we had. And, oh, it looked terrible. And it was big and red and puffy. And, and of course, when somebody always gets hurt, uh, they want you to kiss where it is. And I said, here, your mama will kiss your toe. So I'll hold you and let your mama kiss it. So, um, but the father always draws us into him. Um, there's just something special about being with the father because that's where God calls us to be. He calls us and draws us to him for comfort. And so this resolution this man makes, it, it requires action. I will arise. And then the second part of that action is I will go. So there's two points of action. And the third point of action here in this resolution is I will admit. And look at how he says that. I will arise and go to my father and I will say unto him, I will admit to him. I'm going to go to the person that I have wronged and I'm going to admit my sin. I will confess it. Um, he basically comes and says, I am a sinner in need of salvation. I, I have sinned against heaven. I've sinned against you. This is how he says it. I've sinned against heaven and before thee. In verse 19, I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. So he is rehearsing this before he ever leaves. This is the realization that happens in his life as he realizes where he's at and knows that he needs to return, he comes to this point in his life where he says, I will arise, I will go, I will admit. And there's twofold here, um, twofold of a point. He first, he realizes that his role, uh, there's so many people that tries to blame so many other people for their sins. There's so many others that'll say, well, it's somebody else's fault that I'm in the shape I'm in. They always want to have somebody to blame. When God asked Adam, why did you eat of the tree I told you not to? Adam said, because the woman you gave me get, did it. She's the one that gave it to me. So we always are trying to blame somebody. And this is not new. This goes all the way back to the beginning of time. And so we see here as, as this man, he comes to this resolution in his life that I will have to admit for myself. It's no one else's fault but mine. I'm the one to blame here. And so he says, I will go and I will admit my role. I'll accept the role that I have played in this. Uh, our sin is our sin. Right? We, we can only go so far blaming other people when we have to stop and realize I am the one uh, that have sinned against God. And because I have sinned, I need a savior. And my Lord tells me that if we would confess our sin, that he's faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's how God's word says it. So you and I can always know that we can go to him. He will in no wise turn us away is how the scripture says it. So we see this admission is twofold. It's first before heaven. I have sinned against heaven. I am, I am wrong. I have done wrong before God. And I realize that my sin is causing God to, to have to send his only son to down a cross for, for my sin. It's me. I'm the one that's the murderer. I'm the one that's, that's causing Jesus to die. It's my sin. And because it's my sin, I'm the one to blame. And so when we come to that knowledge of, of realization of our sin that we have sinned, then it's time that we realize what it cost God to save us. There's a, there's a point for us to, to get that there is a great cost that God paid an, an enormous cost so that he could pay for our sins. He redeemed us through his son dying on the cross. And so this man says, I will confess before God that this is my sin. And I will also confess to you, uh, I come with a broken heart. I am, I am so sorry for the way I've done. Sometimes we don't come before others as humbly as we should, to tell them we're sorry. There's times that we have wronged people in our life. There's things that have happened. And, and, and when someone brings it to our attention, we want to make sure out of glory for our God that we do the very best to resolve the situation in a way that, that gives God glory. And just uh, the other day, I was out mowing my yard and I saw where um, the gentleman that mows the yard beside us um, blew a great big piece of, of a stump 
through my screen and, and hit my window and different things. And, and you know what, if I would have went out and, and, and rant and raved and carried on, then, then what kind of a witness would I have been? So uh, when I had the opportunity to visit with him about it, I told him, I said, look, um, when, if you don't mind the next time you're, you're mowing around the stump, just kind of blow things the other way away from my window. Um, we had a, a, a great visit actually. And then I had the opportunity to invite him to church. So, it's a great opportunity for us to be able to um, to share with others how good God is. Um, so to to realize that that we don't have to be combatant in everything that we can can see that the way that we live is a witness to other people. So let me encourage you as you live to do so in such a way that that brings that resolution that that we share the gospel with everything that that we do. So. This man comes to this point where I will arise, I will go, and I will admit. So this is where we come to in our life. That point where he had already hit rock bottom and he realized this, the position he's in and now in this resolution that takes action. So let me encourage you in your life to take action for the Lord. God calls every one of us. And, and I know as scary as this world is that we live in, there's so many uncertainties and so many unknowns that we still serve a mighty, mighty God that loves us, that all things are under his control. There's nothing that's out of the control of our God. He loves us so much and he has a plan for our life. May the Lord bless you and, and look after you. We look forward to being able to, to join together soon. As soon as we're able, we will make some notes and, and tell folks on Facebook and try to make sure everyone knows when we're able to, to try to start meeting again together. Uh, also, I do want to continue to, to remind you that our St. Jude trip has been canceled. I, I spoke to uh, St. Jude today and they are, they're not able to have volunteers come in right now. And so for the, for, for the foreseeable future is what they told me that they're going to have to cancel all those events. Uh, but now we still are able to take, our, our food to them. If you would like to contribute to their pantry, uh, we can still do that. So uh, just let me know and we'll try to make sure that we get everybody um, that, that wanted to be a part of that, uh, the ability to do so. So uh, I look forward to seeing you very soon in person as the Lord allows. May God bless you as we continue to serve him.